Welcome, friends, it's the Movie Boom Podcast. Podcast, enjoy the show. Zachy and Brian are talking about movie news. Movie Boom Podcast on the radio. This is John Connor. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. My name is Marcus Wright. You think you're human? I am human. No! No! If we stay the course, we are dead! We are all dead! I'm the only hope you have. I'm gonna fucking kick your fucking ass! You don't shut up for a second, all right? Welcome to a movie film commentary track. My name is Zaki Hassan. I'm here with Brian Hall. Hey, how's it going, Zaki? Hey, you know, uh, when this movie came out, I think it was the moment where I re- realized uh, the phrase I'll be back is more of a threat than anything else. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you also think it's cheeky and fun to hear I'll be back in two and maybe even three. And then in four, you're like, stop, stop. It's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in case you couldn't tell, we're here to talk about Terminator Salvation. This is the fourth film in uh, the franchise that uh, I'm assuming is still going. Yeah, <laughs> probably. The- probably. Uh, whenever you're re- whenever you're listening to this at any point, there's probably a Terminator in development. And you know what? I mean, we've talked about this in past episodes. I have liked them less and less and less. And yet I will always show up. I am, uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm always hopeful that they'll get it right eventually. And, uh, I, it was, I hadn't watched this one, I think since the theater. So this is going to be a fun one to revisit with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to the discussion. I mean, we, we, we did Terminator three last year and then we sort of, we, we made a blood oath between us. We're like, all right, well, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to finish out these movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so uh, <laughs> we got a couple more in our future, um, which, which contrary to popular perception, our future is set. And and I'm going to say I don't. I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> I know, I know. Or I hope we're in some version where someone screwed something up and they're in the <laughs> middle of correcting it. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, you want to just like get into it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so so we're going to be watching the theatrical cut of Terminator Salvation. There is a director's cut now with boobs. I know, that's literally what it is. I know. <laughs> we, we've chosen to stick to the PG-13 one. Um, to, to, you know, just for the sake of our own, our own saving those precious minutes, I think, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's take a short break. We'll let our sponsors chime in, and then we'll come back and we'll watch Terminator Salvation. And we are back and ready to go. Brian, you queued up? I'm ready to go. Well, we are watching Terminator Salvation. Once again, if you want to watch along with us, you're more than welcome. Again, this is a theatrical cut. But uh, if you don't want to watch along with us, then hopefully we'll keep the conversation engaging enough to to keep you company on whatever it is you happen to be doing while you're listening to us. And and thank you for doing that, by the way. Mm-hmm. So uh, we will hit play on three, the usual one, two, three, play. Here we go, Brian. Yep. One, two, three. Huh. Well, <laughs> I guess uh, to begin, I mean, we can go through our relationship with Terminator again, meaning obviously we like the first one. I adore the second one. The third one I've had complicated feelings on because it feels almost like E.T. wearing the women's clothing. <laughs> Where you're like, it looks kind of like Terminator, but it also, you know, it's got some, it's got the hat and it's got the, (laughs) the vest and a purse, but like, it kind of feels like (laughs) E.T., you know, like, you know, it's, I, I, so, but doing our commentary did help me to see it a little bit more the way that you do. And I probably enjoyed it the most I've ever enjoyed it when I watched it again for, for that commentary track. Um, and it has a killer ending, right? I, I agree with that. So it's like, well, 
you know, it's kind of halfway there and it's still got some great chases in it and like, okay. So then we get Terminator four and I'm curious then what you felt in anticipation of this coming out. And then when you walked out of the theater that day. So in terms of anticipation, I was very excited based on the trailers. I thought great bunch of trailers. And obviously you put Christian Bale in there and, and there was all this, all these factors involved that made me say, well, it seems like they're doing something different. Right. Uh, and I would say even at the start, I, I really, th- this opening uh, sequence, obviously it calls back to the original film, the 84 film, but even the music I, I've said before, I really like the theme that Danny Elfman created for the Marcus Wright character, which is essentially the Terminator salvation theme. Mm. Uh, so I, I was tracking with it for the most part while watching, even though it's like, Hmm, not sure about that. Hmm, that's mm. a little weird. You know, but mm. like you're kind of like, well, if it culminates in something that's emotionally fruitful, then you sort of you you uh you factor all of that in and and the, and it ended and it was just kind of like a wet fart by the time it ended. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And and so I the, I I would say when it ended, I felt nothing. I I did not feel anger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I felt nothing, and I still, I just that th- there's something so vapid and vacant about this movie that's really frustrating to me. Because at least me, I I see the bits and pieces of of clear affinity that the people who made this film have for yeah. its the history of the franchise. Yep, but it it's it's almost like a. There's, it's like a fan film almost, you know, like that's yeah. what it feels like. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. My takeaway was I didn't love it. And it's probably, I would imagine for the same reasons you said, because there, there's some good stuff in it, or at least some interesting things, some ideas. But at the end of the day, it just, it's like, what did that add up to? And it didn't feel well, well, like right here, just hit pause, Brian. This is such a right weird here. moment. Yeah. He's like, so that's what death tastes like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, wow, you're kind of a dick. Like, <laughs> well, let's, yeah. Like, let's get into this. Who is this guy? This is the problem. <laughs> like, now, now it's okay, Brian, to ask that question at, you know, uh, 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 three minutes into the movie. Yes. The problem is you're still asking that after the credits have stopped rolling. Yeah, so Sam Worthington here playing Marcus. He's a person who's on death row signing over his body, I guess, to, to Cyberdyne to do what they will with it. But he, we don't know his crime, right? No. And then when he wakes up, am I rooting for some sort of redemption for this guy? Like... Right. You know, at some point he is like, okay, well, we got to go get Kyle. And I'm like, why do you, do you That's care? Right. Like who yeah. are you making up for something in your past? Are you a changed person now? Like his character right. is so confusing and vague. The, right. So this, this is the problem right up top, right? Either Marcus is a horrific murderer mm-hmm. and that's your starting point mm-hmm. or he's an innocent man or he did something, but he did it for the right reasons, mm-hmm. and he's carrying the guilt. Right? That those are your your options, right? Mm-hmm. And we don't know. I mean, we we are never given that information about him about th- this moment right here. Why is he being put to death? Mm-hmm. Never made clear. But the only little detail we're we're given, which for people who aren't watching along, and Zachy just pointed out, we have the the Cyberdyne representative coming in, and it's Helena Bonham Carter, and she has cancer. You know. And he just goes in for this kiss. He forces yeah. a kiss on her and then says something like, yeah, so that's what death tastes like. So what are we supposed to take away from that moment? Right. At all. I mean, I I guess it's a character moment for him. Right. But I don't know what it means. That's right. So is he like a like an asshole? <laughs> you know, like, is he yeah. does he have no regard for humanity? I suppose I, you know, no, I don't know. Now, now the one thing I will say is I I think that Sam Worthington gives the movie more than what's on the page. Like I I find him interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. And 
And I will go so far as to say, I don't know if you agree with me on this. I think he's better than Christian Bale in this movie. I absolutely do. And and this is I about about a third of the way through. I was actually like, I think Christian Bale might be kind of bad in this. <laughs> you know what's funny? I wrote down Bale is very screamy. A lot, right? Yeah. Like, and, it's, and it and it's it's weird, unmodulated screaming because it just comes out of nowhere at random points. Yeah, he even at one point yells at this little girl, like, "You get out of here!" <laughs> Good word, dude. Like he he's very intense, but there's very little humanity element yeah. for him in this movie. You know, and he's supposed to be this leader that everyone looks up to. And it, I just he just kind of seems like a intense bully. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, because basically the uh, per this movie's telling, right? He 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 becomes an ins- he's like the love doctor on late night radio. <laughs> He's like, hey, everybody, you're listening to yes, KTRM. Right, right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Bringing you the hits and saving humanity. Yeah. And oh, yeah, if you happen to see a robot with a, you know, pulsator <laughs> kilocron on its arm, you can pull it off and that will help help you out a great deal. This is Connor signing up. <laughs> Especially yeah, I mean, I mean, it because because what, what it's trying to show, look at what a badass John Connor is, right? He jumps into that hole. What a yeah. badass. He lands on that Terminator. What a badass. He jumps in the water with uh, clearly illogic <laughs> about how he intends to be retrieved by a submarine. Dude, let's we'll get there. We'll get <laughs> we'll there. Get there. But what a badass. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and it it's not th- there is no character for him to play and that's really frustrating because whatever affinity we have for John in this movie is based entirely entirely on movie two and movie three and having that as our backstory. Mm-hmm. Right. But the weird thing, and again, you, you, you tell me if you feel this, I, I look at Christian Bale in this and I'm like, I'm like, I, I can see Eddie Furlong becoming Nick Stahl. I can see Eddie Furlong becoming Christian Bale. I can't see Nick Stahl becoming Christian Bale. Huh? Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't buy this as the same character from Terminator three. No. Right. Even uh, though this based on the, the text and whatever, this is clearly meant to be in essence a sequel to Terminator Three. But you know what I love about two two is one of my top five movies of all time for a lot right. of reasons. I think it's amazing, but I also very it's very personal to me. I saw it at a certain age and it's just I hear the sound effects from that movie and it it, it tingles me. I love it dearly. Um, so anyway, that John is kind of in my head. And what I love about that portrayal of John is he's very young in that movie. I mean, he's, I, I think he's supposed to be 13, but I think the actor is like 11 or something. In, in T2, he's in supposed T2. to be 10. Oh, 10. That's what it is. Yeah. I remember he's yeah. very young, but what yeah. I love is he's a punk. He's kind of a smart aleck, but he's also kind of knows how to talk to people and he knows how right. to, you know, be a therapist to his mom a little bit. Mm-hmm. He, he helps yeah. her at the end. He knows right from wrong. He's That's staunch right. about right from wrong. And you see these amazing characteristics that will turn into a great future leader. And I think some of that smirkiness, some of that little punk rebellion sense of humor thing is probably what helps someone as a grown up leading a lot of people. Right. And we see not a trace of that in this bail character. Yeah. He seems, he is so deadly serious and always at 11. Um, right. And it would be nice to see, I mean, we see moments with him and, and his wife and there's just, just no warmth there. It'd be nice to even just see a little warmth. I mean, they, moments. they, they kiss at one point almost to tell the audience, oh, these are, they're romantic. They are a couple. Right. That's not his sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, but you know, I, I want to say real quick, this, uh, we, you have to remember this is 2009. We're coming after the dark night. Yes. Which is just everybody's new favorite movie and like, you know, hope for (laughs) cinema and superhero movies and whatever. Everyone thought that movie should be nominated for best picture. And it was like the highest grossing movie. Like, so we've got Jonathan Nolan who co-scripted that right coming over. And we've got Christian Bale coming from our new favorite movie coming over. It's like, Oh, we're going to get the dark night of Terminator movies. That's right. Right. That's what, or I should say, that's what I was coming into this. No, I, I mean, I certainly, I was, I was there feeling that, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and it, it was af- after Terminator three, I mean, Terminator three did pretty well. And the plan had been to roll right into 
Terminator 4 right after that and to bring back Nick Stahl and Claire Danes and just do you know something that takes place shortly after yep. and then all the right stuff I mean the, if anything this franchise is known for just taking out production companies <laughs> that's true yeah because I think every single one is made by a different company you know uh-huh you got Hemdale, first one, Carol Co, the next one, uh, C, C2, the third one, and then this was Halcyon, which I think they did this, and then they went bankrupt, you know? And and so it was like a rights thing, and so we go from 2003 to 2009, so at that point, uh, things, you know, it, they, they were, they decided to recast. And the thing is that the initial idea as uh, before Bale comes on, which is that Marcus Wright is our focus, he's the main character. And John Connor exists in the periphery of this story, kind of uh, as, as you said. You know, he's he's Jesus and Ben Hur, right? Yeah. And and they wanted Bale for Marcus Wright, right? Which you can totally see. Oh, totally. Right. Uh, and and so Bale, obviously, uh, probably at the peak of his 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 negotiating strength, he's like, well, I want to play John Connor, which understandably, because he's probably somebody who grew up with these movies. Well, John Connor's the like the main guy, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But then you have to adjust the script and turn it into kind of a two hander, but not really. That is exactly it, right? And then it becomes this tug of war the entire movie about yeah, whose head am I inside? Who do I care yeah. about? Who's my my main protagonist and i think the movie becomes really muddy because right. it never settles on one yeah i mean this this entire opening sequence it it feels like something that would have been added in rewrites to give connor some meat because because really when you think about it we start with with the with the marcus execution scene yeah. we do the flash forward and you can imagine some a, a smaller action c- scene that culminates in marcus waking up mhm yes but instead it's we got this whole thing here and then we got to have this this diversion where where you know where Connor has to meet the resistance leaders. Which let's talk about that later about how nonsensical this whole resistance hierarchy is. <laughs> yeah. And, and then and then we we circle back to 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 Marcus, right? Yeah, I mean, we should have gotten a twenty eight days later kind of scene with Marcus. Exactly. Exactly. Right where he wakes up and the world has changed, and yeah. he's like, "What? Like I thought I was dead." A eh? And B, what happened to Los Angeles? <laughs> you yeah, know? I mean, I mean, this right here when when he wakes up, th- like it's almost like we should be here right after the 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 crawl or whatever, you know? Yeah, I have to call out. By the way, I remember I can hear it even though the sound is off. When <laughs> Bale after fighting that Terminator and he speaks into that radio and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like. <laughs> But I wonder if McG is like, I don't know, man, like worked with Nolan. Like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna give him any <laughs> notes. You know, the, but speaking of McG, to Joseph McGinty, we should say. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I'll say, having uh, rewatched this, I'm like, it's not badly shot. You know what I actually wrote down? I put not as bad as I remember as, <laughs> as a future war movie. Y- yes. Uh, some of it's quite good. I mean, the action, to your point, I mean, the action, there's a lot of wonders that are really impressive. I I agree. And I don't even feel like they're showing off. They're just kind of well executed and put you in the action like we just saw with that helicopter crash. I mean, it's, but the problem is this being the fourth Terminator film, it's nowhere near as complete or thoughtful or satisfying as the ones that came before it. Well, and and certainly you expect a, a little bit of visual consistency with the future war stuff that we've seen in the prior films. I wrote that too. I, I said it doesn't help that the it feels like a completely different aesthetic. Yeah, and the uh, the original is so iconic. So why wouldn't mm-hmm. you try to link it at least visually with the look of the future? Right. Well. I mean, in in the first film, Kyle talks about how you know we wouldn't go out during the day like night was when we it was safe to you know cause under cover of darkness and like so much of this movie is set during the day mm-hmm. okay so this right here so connor <laughs> can we explain how this works this, i don't i don't this is truly like a kind of moment <laughs> where it's just like 
take me to the leaders. Mm. And then it's like, well, they're in a submarine in the ocean somewhere. <laughs> I'll find them. Ah! Or it's like, you know what it is? It's like the moment in the other guys when Samuel Jackson and the rock jump up that building yeah, right. <laughs> with no regard for how, if it makes any sense. And he's just like, I'll just jump in the ocean. I'll find the sub. Knock, <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing? You can't jump in the ocean not knowing where the sub is and then knock on its door. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. It's so weird. So, so okay. So right here, you have you have General Ashdown, who's played by the great Michael Ironside. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, put Michael Ironside in more things. I always love Michael Ironside. But he's like John Connor, the prophesied leader of the resistance. I'm like prophesied by who? By John Connor? I thought that too. Yeah, where's that coming from? He was right? he's the only one that would know that and would have to start that story. Yeah, that, is he going to tell everybody? So here's what happened. And why this would he after do the that? nuclear war? Everybody gathers together. So uh, before I was born, this I mean, like, yeah, I mean, they, it wouldn't happen. It know? almost feels like then he'd be like this David Koresh like figure where he would be exactly, like, yeah, right. Yeah. Trying so to garner through, followers. So weird. And that's throughout, right? You have characters in the movie who are are talking like they're fans of the Terminator franchise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Because even Skynet. Skynet's like, <gasps> Kyle Reese. I'm like, why does Skynet know who Kyle Reese is? Totally. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I See, there's almost something interesting, an idea where it's like he knows he's the guy. Exactly. But he has to rise to that anyway, you know, instead of building a cult following. Well, and just the, the whole notion of of there being this sort of military hier- hierarchy of the resistance and John Connor is just like a grunt, like that doesn't hold water for me. Hmm. You know, I, I'm kind of like, well, it would make more, how can the resistance be this organized? You know, I, 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 it makes more sense to me. They have all these disparate factions and John Connor ends up becoming like a unifying figure. I, I mean, that's sort of what's teased a little bit at the end of three, right? Right. Yeah, so exactly. Like, Who's in charge yeah. there? Uh, yeah. I, I am, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So then you say, okay, well maybe cause this is set what? 2018. Uh, yeah. This is and 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 the future war stuff isn't. Uh, excuse me. What we see in like Terminator, the f- the first film, is twenty thirty two. Uh huh. So okay, maybe this is fifteen years before that, and sure. things haven't quite gotten that far. But but it's, I I'm kind of like, I I need a few more guideposts that get us from here to there. Mm-hmm. You know, and and when the movie starts, right, we have Connor. He goes into the that. Skynet research facility and he's like oh uh you know they're developing a T800 right and and I'm kind of like well why why do that already mm. right cuz I was thinking about I'm I'm like well the TH right here Marcus is the t- the terminator human hybrid he was created as a as an infiltration unit uh-huh the T800 was, is also an infiltration unit right right Right. So I'm like, well, why not? Why don't you make it like this? Marcus is the between point. Uh huh. And Skynet's failure with Marcus makes it, it makes it say, hey, we're going to do this instead. And maybe you end with a tease of the T800. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, well, we should. Yeah. It was, uh, this one was interesting. <laughs> I, you know, um, we get to see John listening to these tapes that his mother left him and we get like a vocal cameo from Linda Hamilton. Okay. So here's another question I have <laughs> now. Now, th- obviously that picture is, is from the end of Terminator of the first film. Yeah. And at the end of the first film, she's recording a version of this, yeah. of what we're hearing. Yeah. However, it's not this, it's not exactly this. Yeah. So I'm like, did she just keep saying the same thing? like with slight variations on a whole bunch of these tapes. <laughs> I know. I know. Right? Because I'm like, c- clearly that's not what she says at the end of the first. It's, it's, it's observably different. Yeah. But it's similar enough. Y- yeah. No, I know. <laughs> I know. It's... I swear to God, I'm not trying to be like nitpicky McGee. I, I'm really not. No. Well, it's easy when you are talking this movie out loud because there are a million nits to be picked. But I really did. I was surprised that I kind of was like, okay, this isn't as bad as I remembered. But it yeah. is, at the end of the day, 
an absolute like Frankenstein of a of a script, right? I mean, you can we say that sometimes with certain movies, it feels like a Frankenstein or a Frankenstein's monster, uh, mm-hmm. but this is so obviously, yeah. Like it began with this, but then they had to do that, so then they probably pulled that out, but then stitched this thing in, and so it just feels really. And like a and patchwork. this was, I mean, lest we forget that it was it was also impacted by a writer's strike in '08. Mm, I forgot about that. Yeah, which sure didn't help, you sure. know. Um, but yeah, like the whole, the whole notion of the tapes and stuff, I think it's cute. I think it's, it's definitely nice. They got, uh, 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 Lena Hamilton back in there, but again, I'm just like, why, why have it call back to that prior recording? If you're just not going to use that prior recording, right. Have her say something else. Yeah. Yeah. I do like the link. Cause then it does help me in my mind go, Oh, well that's, that's his mom. That's, that's John Connor. But you know what? You could like like we see that photograph. You could have her, uh, him listening to something completely different from her. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But have him look at that picture, and that'll create the link. Totally. You know. Yeah, I agree. I do love these uh, early Terminator designs. Yeah, they're very scary. Yeah, and and uh, you know this is something Reese in the original film he talks about how like the the earlier models you know they had rubber skin they were easy to spot mm-hmm. and that's re- referring to this right and the the eight hundred is more advanced right so all of that tracks and and again I it, I'm kind of again it's like I like the idea of Marcus as the in between point mm-hmm. Skynet wants to infiltrate humans it, it, when 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 we create a human hybrid like this it's unreliable so now. The, the next and final step is is the Arnold Schwarzenegger model. Yes. Although I will say this. This is what I almost said earlier. There's something kind of, if you can believe in this series, stretches uh, credulity to me in that they took like a human being, but like made him a machine, but they put his skin back over it or something. Or like he has his heart, but he has like a metal chest. It like... It just feels yeah. intense <laughs> or like, could a human body handle that? I, I, does that make sense what I'm saying? Or, or let me to go further. I mean, I think the original idea with this movie, I love this stuff. Like this is great. Like the out of control yep. machine mm-hmm. gun. It's kind of feels dangerous. Um, was that Marcus was, or no, John was going to die, but they were going to put right. John's skin over Marcus. That's right. Which is, I've never thought that would ever be believable. Because to me, I'm like, what is he going to look like? The villain from Men in Black? I was thinking that. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Right. You know, I mean, I know how it worked in Face Off, and I, I'm willing to roll with that. But, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, he would look real like quick, it. by the way, right, right here, real quick, where he's like, if you point it at somebody, you better be ready to pull the trigger. Yeah. That's about as much character development as Marcus gets in this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? Like, okay, so I guess he's like a military guy, I guess. You know, like he something. He does feel military, doesn't he? I mean, yeah. Right. With weapons etiquette. But we yeah. still don't. I mean, and I don't, maybe I missed it, but do we ever get a moment where he is endeared to these guys? To Kyle no. and the girl? No. It, I mean, it's it's movie shorthand. Yeah. It's like, oh, cute little girl who doesn't talk. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's it's expecting you to 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 fill in those gaps with just uh, sort of the the gestalt of watching movies. Yeah, you know what would have even helped with him rubbing his head right there? Maybe he's got scars all over his body. Mm-hmm. You know, something where he's like, "What the? What happened to me? What's wrong?" Like something happened to me. Yeah, you know, because when they do that to Wolverine and attach things to his bones, like you know, he can heal. Right. But he's a human yeah. being here. His skin. That's works. a great point. I don't know. Well, and, and if you remember the trailer gave away that Marcus is a Terminator. Yeah. Which, so I went into this with that knowledge and boy, I would have loved if they actually kept that in their back pocket. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been shocking. I don't know. I mean, we should be hundred percent experiencing this movie through Marcus. 100%. 100%. Yes. In, instead of going back and forth, you know, cause, cause I think it's, it, it's, it's really weird because, because it splits our focus in a way where we're kind of like, well, you know, you said earlier, like whose head am I in related to that? Like what's the important stuff here where, you know? Yeah. And, 
and we're trying to connect these dots. I mean, the, the whole thing with, with the signal, like it's, it's interesting to me, but I'm almost like the problem with this whole storyline about the signal is that it leads to these long stretches where Connor is just kind of like sitting around mm-hmm. and I'm like, maybe, maybe you stretch that out. Maybe ha- have it be a through line. Like he, 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 like the resistance hears about this thing and they're, they're, they're going on these quests to, to track down this information about the signal. And maybe that's what brings him to Skynet instead of, Oh, I, I need to find Kyle Reese. Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny in what you were just saying, it kind of inspired something where I thought, I know they wouldn't do this because they have Christian Bale and he has to be a co-lead in this movie. But what if, like you said, it was from Marcus's point of view, he discovers he's a Terminator. Like, who am I? What am I? But yeah. he ends up, somehow getting involved where he saves John Connor and John Connor's like, holy crap, like a machine and whatever. And that's like what sparks the idea of maybe a machine can be helpful. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's the ending. And that's what, it, but then again, he couldn't be inspired because he already has the knowledge from his childhood. You know what I mean? Right. He's going to have to teach him everything all over again. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Uh, I, I do want to say Anton Yelchin. I really like him as Kyle in this. Yep. Yep. Uh, I he he does these subtle things that that call back to what Michael Bean does mm-hmm. in in the original film. So you buy it as as he's the character he grows into. Totally. Certainly more so than than Jai Courtney, you know, in, in the next one. Yeah. Who doesn't remotely in any way <laughs> bring to mind Michael Bean? You know. Yeah. See, this is this is nice. This is a nice moment, but why? Yeah. What's but happening? But why? Yeah. Well, and and I mean, related to that, I mean, we don't get a sense of Kyle's backstory. Like, there was an opportunity there also to sort of flesh him out a little bit. Totally. Yeah. Which I enjoyed in the uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles, where we get a little glimpse of yeah, see? Kyle pre-war. That's kind of the interesting thing, is this movie came out in between the seasons of Sarah Connor Chronicles. Oh. Interesting. And that's that that's sort of frustrating to me in that the the opportunity was there to maybe even not explicitly but in in subtle ways have have the the works connect with each other. I mean, I would like that. I mean, I had not seen that show until this past year in 2024 based yeah. you've been recommending it for years and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it has you know, it's it's ups and downs but as a whole i thought it was a really good additional terminator story yeah no i i I, i've said it for a while you know i think out of all the out of all the versions of here's what happened after t t2 i would say sarah connor chronic sarah Sarah connor chronicles is the best uh depiction of that yeah i think so and i i've also mentioned on this show i've just been really hungry for more terminator stories lately so i i even started reading the books that followed, I want to say (laughs) pre T3 or maybe even around then, but, uh, you know, to mixed, mixed results, but yeah, uh, I just, I want more stories. And so that's, I, I, that's part of it too. I'll, I'll always be Charlie Brown with the football, (laughs) you know, with these things, because I'm always hopeful that they'll, they'll get it right. Well, I've recommended it to you before. I need to, I need to get it in your hands. Robocop versus Terminator, the, the comic book. Right. Um, I think you'd enjoy that. Yeah, I'd like to check it out. And I did play the the Terminator Resistance game also on PlayStation. Yeah. And that was a really fun game. That was, you know, I, movie I adaptation to check that games out. are a little rough sometimes. And it's not an yeah. adaptation of anything. But it really did feel like an authentic representation of the world and getting to be in that world and try to fight Terminators and accomplish something. I, I had a so that's a, that's a future war setting. Yes. Termin- and there's moments where you're sneaking. And that's the thing. A lot of times in games, you're just shooting stuff and that's all you do. But in this one, it's really hard. You need uh, the right amount of ammo, the right weapons. And so sometimes you're sneaking through abandoned hospitals and you have to hide. You have to be stealth. Yeah. And so it's just safer to not engage with them. And so you're hiding under something and you'll see, you know, like an endoskeleton, like walking past you. And it's like, Uh, Like it's scary. It's fun. Like I, it's what I would hope for out of a Terminator game. So I recommend it. I'm I'm intrigued. See, I'm, I'm looking at 
at all of this and, and you know with with John Connor aka the love doctor on on the on the radio <laughs> yeah 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 and and again i go back to it, how much more interesting would it be if if for most of the movie that is our only exposure to that character sure right like in other words the first time he's introduced into the film is marcus hearing his voice and that's it yeah there's some mystique yeah and and i, I just i think prob when when you look at the 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 the, the sweep of the films of the franchise, let's say after the second film, what the the problem they keep running into is we don't know what to do with John Connor. Mm-hmm. Not notwithstanding T three, let's put, let's let's sort of shuffle T three in with with the first two because that's still pre Future War, you know. Mm-hmm. But in 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 this one, he's just I mean, unfortunately, he's just a very dull character, right? Yeah. In the next one, they're like, hey, let's just make him the villain, right? And, Right, and then in the in the next next one, they're like, let's just kill him off in uh, you know, <laughs> in, in the teaser, right? Yeah, which is not very satisfying either. Yeah, not not satisfying, right? And that's the problem. It I, it it smacks of the, sort of throwing your hands in the air. We don't know what to do, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and I think the problem is that once he becomes the John Connor of legend, that is not interesting except conce- as a concept. Yeah. Right. So in other words, at the, at that point, he needs to be just, he needs to exist only as the person Kyle Reese is describing to us in the first film. Yeah. Or if you do have him as the lead, I think another issue you run into is that none of his missions are going to feel like they can compete Yes, with the bigger missions we've already seen, which are him sure. existing or not existing. Cause I'm like, what, what sort of plots would you have? Like, well, blow up this, factory it's like well, okay yeah you know like hey he did it no, you know yeah. well you're and and certainly that's the problem this film runs into is like well we know that in 2032 this this and this got to happen mm-hmm. so this feels uh, uh, unessential by its very existence and and especially this is the thing by the end of the movie that that was my problem is i remember when it when it uh when i was walking out of the theater i was like i didn't feel like there was anything in this that really mattered mm-hmm you know, yeah, uh, to to the the broader story because it, we're we're just moving towards this preordained endpoint. Yeah, and so uh, you know, what what are you trying to do? the The other thing I was thinking about is is to me this movie was a test of the hypothesis of how many elements can we remove and still have it feel be a Terminator movie. Hmm. Uh, in t- not just visually, but you mean in terms of because I mean the first. That's the thing. I saw Terminator 2 first when I was a yeah. kid. And then I saw the first one and I was like, oh, these movies rhyme with one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and they don't feel indulgent in that way. But then as you continue to try to rhyme with them or repeat the lines, it does start to feel right. indulgent. And oh. Yeah. And, and so is that what you're saying? Like it, you, you miss to, to a large movies, extent. You also would be annoyed if they were there. <laughs> well, it's like this. Like, like, think about it. Terminator 3 we lose one major ingredient, which is James Cameron. Sure. But you've still got Stan Winston. You've still got Arnold Schwarzenegger. You've still got the characters, um, you know, that, that are connected to the earlier films. You've still got the music, the, the, the theme rather, mm-hmm. you know? So it, it, and it's like, okay, is this still a Terminator movie? It feels like it. And then with this one, it's like, we, we lose the time travel. We lose Arnold Schwarzenegger. We, mm-hmm. you know, how much, how many pieces can you take away and still have it be a Terminator movie? And I'm looking at this imagery right now, and this could be from anything. Exactly. This, like, I don't picture the resistance having goddamn fighter jets, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the yeah, like, this movie looks yellow. Yes. And those old, older movies look gray and blue. Like, at the yeah. very least, and put some skulls on the ground, for goodness sake. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, this looks like the road. The road, yep. You know, and 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 by the way, there's 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 interesting stuff here. Like, I like the idea that the the remnants of humanity are like turning on each other. Oh, totally, right? Yeah. And I like the idea that until Connor is able to pull all these t- people together, 
they they are doomed, right? Like that. Certainly, that's what Kyle says in the first film, right? We were we were we were almost we'd almost checked out, and then one man showed us, you know. So there's there's and, your one possible Connor movie, you know, like how yeah. does he become the lead? He knows he's the leader, but how does he become exactly. the leader? And you're dealing with exactly. this messy resistance, yeah. Right. So so to me, they they they're unclear on their own mythology because like. Again, you have this. You have the scene later in the movie, which is essentially like, you know, hand over your badge. You're, you know, you're, you're suspended, kind of thing. You know, yeah. And you're like, what's that doing in this movie? You know, I know. This looks like The Last of Us to me, mm-hmm. which is yep. not a compliment. I was thinking that. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I I remember when Mick G was first announced as as the director of this movie. Yeah. And, yeah. There, there was a lot of online uh, shitting going on, you know, because obviously at that point, Mick G was known pretty much just for the two Charlie's Angels movies, which are great. Like he does a good job with what those movies are intending to be. Right. And so then it's like, well, should that guy who's making this sort of pop art action film? Yes. Be making. Yeah. A, a Terminator film. And I mean, I, I beat around the bush. I mean, people were not fans of the name. You know what I mean? Like that. I was, I was going to mention this. I'm like, a, a lot of this feels like a self inflicted wound. It really does. I, I, I'm sure he's a lovely person, and he's like, look, Mick G is the name I've had for for since I was a kid. Whatever. I'm like, bro, that's fine. <laughs> Your friends can call you that. Yeah. If he was being credited as, as as Joe McGinty, I promise you, I promise you, he would not be getting or have gotten near as much shit as he did. I 100% believe that. Yeah. And I mean, it's, I know it sounds so like superficial and maybe petty, but it's just true. (laughs) I mean, you know, like if my, you know, you called me skibbity dibbity, like that was your nickname (laughs) for me. And I was going to direct like, you know, Goodfellas or something. And I'm like, directed by (laughs) skibbity dibbity. I'm like, what? It's what my friends call me. Like, (laughs) dude, come on, man. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, seriously, right? I mean, just just keeping it real. That's that's just what it is. You it's know? not helping you. It's not helping. You. It's not helping, right? And and again, the shame of it is, I I think in terms of s- shots and sequences, the guy knows what he's doing. I agree with that. Actually, I don't think he does a bad job. No. Yeah, for me, the the issues are with the script. Well, I do actually, and the and the look. I wish the landscape resembled the previous films. Even this, like this, is interesting, but it doesn't look like a Terminator movie. So this is the problem. So so you look at this giant sort of Pacific Rim looking <laughs> yes. Terminator. Yes. Right. And I'm I'm like I I'm sorry. I just don't believe that it exists in the in the Terminator world. I didn't like the sort of. I think it comes later, or we saw one. The robot eels. Right. That yeah. feels like that the, kind of crap you see in a video game. I remember I was so excited to rent a Star Wars Nintendo game when I was a kid because I wanted to <laughs> play the movie Star Wars. And then like the first two levels are just Luke shooting scorpions. Yeah, yep. On, on Tatooine. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, well, first of all, there's not even scorpions in the movie. You know what I mean? It's like, it just feels like this. And then, you know, there's all these other sorts of things you have to fight that weren't in the film, but they have to invent these things to make it a video game. And yes, so likewise, I hate when they're like, well, it's a, we got to go bigger. You know, this is yeah. this is a sequel. It can't be the stuff we've already seen. And so they invent these things that feel like some very talented production designer came up with. But yeah, but it doesn't uh, no, feel I, I, authentic. Th- this movie, you got this like this giganto Terminator and then you've got like mo- Moto Terminators and Sea Snake Terminators. And it feels like the toy line. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's probably a very similar to what I'm trying to express. Yeah. Yeah. You, like I remember in, in the early nineties, there was an aliens toy line from Kenner. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and it, you know, this is the good old days when you could just have like a, a Walmart toy line based on an R rated movie, <laughs> you know? Yep. Yep. I miss those days. But so you had the space Marines and then you got to have aliens, right? Well, you can't just do the one kind. So they'd be like, oh, this is the bull alien and this is the scorpion alien and yeah, this yeah, is the this yeah. and that, you know? And and I would imagine that uh, that all stemmed from, you know, in, in Alien 3, you have the, the creature it gestates inside a dog. Yeah. 
And when it's born, it kind of resembles a dog. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure the Kenner people were like, hey, stop drilling. You've hit oil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? So that that's what it feels like here, where it's Skynet's just got every every kind of uh, Terminator iteration you can think of. But then what it does, it makes me say, well, then why does it need an infiltration unit? If you got this monstrosity here, yeah, yeah, yeah. just have it traipse across the countryside and just step on everything. Yeah. I was actually you thinking know? that with the motorcycle Terminators in here, too. Like, this just feels like a demand from, uh, the, yeah, the toy companies. Yeah, exactly. So uh, while we're talking about the toy company, so so Playmates had the license for 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 this film, and this is this is the first PG thirteen Terminator film. I was the way. just going to so, ask you. I don't remember what this is rated. Yeah. Um. Uh. Interesting. It, it, no f bombs and plenty of antiseptic violence clues you in that it's a PG thirteen. You know what's funny though? I the credit where credits due. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what this was sure. rated. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think again. I think the action is staged well. I mean, I, this sequence here. I think. I mean, it's it's not boring. I'll, I'll say this. I'm watching it now. Yeah. I, I and I know I, I keep harping on this. This will be the last time. But tint this blue. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Make it yeah. resemble the landscape from uh, Terminator. But look at this, right? Clear nod to T2. Yep. With the truck, and then you even see Marcus, he, like right here, where he pushes the thing out. That's obviously an echo of the T one thousand. Totally, but I, but, I, but my, my but brain it, would, my brain would lock onto it in a very different way that I just believe would kick it up a star or a half yeah. star. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, like th that's the dilemma. I think We're, whenever you're working within any franchise framework, right? It's like how strenuously do you stick to what's already been done? Right. And it's, it's a, I can fully imagine that there were a lot of conversations behind the scenes about how do we, I, I you don't think they had the conversation about tinting it blue. I know I was, it's funny you say that because I was just thinking like, I would love to just ask point Blake, why didn't you make it look like the others? Yeah. I'm sure there was a decision and maybe it's budget. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure the calculus was, okay do how much do we want it to just be night shoots well that's going to drive up the budget you know stuff like that totally i get that you know i get that and then it's again it's like well do do we want to expand the boundaries of what to expect from this world right like well daylight exists maybe we want to show what what is daylight like you know just because we haven't seen it before doesn't mean we can't ever see it. you know i'm sure they had those discussions see and i'm okay with that i'm okay with the daylight stuff but yeah I guess Terminator 2 was a, a movie that was probably color timed chemically. You know what I mean? Yes. Like it was of yep. an era. And now we're in a, a point where you can do anything you want. You can color every pixel and change it however you like. And so this almost feels like, well, it's dusty. It's the future. It's whatever. It's sepia. Yeah. You know, I'm it's saying, like, right. no, but the other movies, daylight doesn't look like that. Right. You know, and I, I don't know. I know, I know this is so, so nitpicky and some people are like, who cares? But I, yeah, I really feel subconsciously, I do feel like it would make a difference. No, I agree with you. I mean, look, just as, as a corollary, you look at like Rogue One. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. 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 And they, there was a real effort made to have it aesthetically resemble specifically Star Wars, A New Hope. And and that helps. That that's a very important ingredient in why that movie, in my opinion, works as well as it does. Yeah. Right? Because I I, I believe that it flows right into Star Wars. Yeah. I you know. Agree. Um no, but I was saying earlier, yeah, so so Playmates had the 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 toy rights for this film. And they drew some kind of a bad hand where I guess the the likeness rights hadn't been worked out yet. So specifically uh -huh. they didn't have christian bale's likeness right sure so the john connor figure has sunglasses and like a bandana over his nose and mouth <laughs> that's amazing yeah and i'm like just don't just don't make the figure then right. if that's what you're gonna you know well if that's that's the one iconic character that if you're gonna want an action figure from the film but he may as well just be resistance fighter number three yeah if that's what yeah exactly like. yeah yeah yeah, this this movie came out uh, late May two thousand and nine. It was the same month as Star Trek, the two thousand nine Star Trek movie, which oh. also had Anton Yelchin, by the way. Oh wow! Okay. 
Um, and Playmates did the toys for both, and both toy lines were just a disaster. Oh, really? so <laughs> I think at that point, Playmates was like, you know, we're just going to go back to Ninja Turtles, and we'll just, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll just do that. You know? Well, you had said that uh, your note, I mean, like just action figures in general just aren't selling like they used to, right? Yep. That's right. Yeah, I mean, just maybe it's just a different world, you know. Yeah, I mean, is it sort of like a a, a ball on a string and a cup to kids these days because they have you know <laughs> more, their phones and and other sorts of things to entertain them? I mean, I mean, probably you know, I think certainly uh, the shelf life for action figures in terms of of the age range has probably gotten much shorter. You know, right? Because I would imagine that you know during our childhood. Kids probably played with toys, figures, up until 10 or 11, I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. That feels about right. Ish. I would say that we probably, you can shave off at least three, four years from that. Well, and it makes me think of that Terminator game where do I want to hold an action figure of John Connor in my hand or do I want to play a right. game that isn't a side-scrolling yeah. 8-bit little right. thing where I'm fighting scorpions. Yeah. But I actually can play this incredible game where I feel like I'm in the movie because that's what we right. do now. Yeah, I mean, it, that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, not a bad sequence that we just saw there. I mean, I was even watching it now, half paying attention while I'm talking to you. I'm like, oh, that was well executed. Good idea. Right. Exciting. So so the Blair Williams character, I I do not understand at all because I think she's like aggressively stupid. <laughs> go, go go on. I I just think she has she has no reason to trust Marcus except that that's what the script dictates. You know it's funny. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think I, there's the scene where she's almost like assaulted. Yeah. At one point, and I remember thinking like, ugh, like I just, yep yep. It was like icky, and I just didn't want it. But then I realized, well, if you don't have that, there is absolutely no reason for her to trust this person who is made up of the parts of your enemy. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. But, and, and this goes to what, what is Marcus's motivation? If you remember earlier in the film, he's telling Kyle and star, he's like, I have to go to San Francisco. I'm looking for somebody. Who's he looking for? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Is he, is he looking for Helena Bonham Carter, the woman who had cancer when he died? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, right. They, they never, uh, they never explained that. That's number one. And then he's like, oh, I got to find K- uh, Kyle. Why? I, that's the thing that I wrote down that I didn't understand. Why is he, does he care? Like yeah. what endeared him to them? What does he feel like he needs to complete with those characters? It's never made clear. See, th- so this is the thing, right? This is the type of thing that you would, you would, you would square the circle on that. You would say, Oh, he had a, a teenage son who died and totally. he killed the person who killed him. And that's why he went to jail, you know, totally. And then the whole thing about him teaching him how to safely hold a weapon. Like that's something he would right. have done with his kid, or maybe he did. And he's getting to do it again. Cause that's in his wiring. You know, so to speak. Right. Like, like so uh, you see, maybe he blames himself for what happened to his son. Mm-hmm. And that's why he's like, just cut me up until there's nothing left. Right. That's interesting. Yes. Yes. Right. And then why he would immediately latch on to Kyle and want to sort of in, in the girl and want to look out for them. Right. So so to me, that's that's so obvious. You allude to that in the beginning when you have Helena Bonham Carter looking through his paper. She's like, I know you blame yourself for what happened to your son or whatever. Something. Right. right. I know. I know. And maybe and then we get little snippets, little little flashes of what happened or or a, a quick cut to, you know, him with his son or something or whatever. I'm I'm just uh, postulating, but you know, no, I completely agree. I mean, that's, I would love to read the, the, the draft that came before they felt like they had to puff up John Connor. Right. Maybe some of that's there. And I mean, it's not like it couldn't be there. Like you said, I mean, it's like a line he can have at the beginning, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of like the idea of, you know, before uh, Kyle and Marcus are separated, Marcus makes enough of a mark on Kyle that that y- you see just as important as John Connor was Marcus in making Kyle Reese who he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah, why not make them all, if you're going to introduce them like this, like have them be, oh, you didn't know this was a piece of the puzzle. Not, not the biggest piece, but this piece 
helped the other pieces. See, because here, here's my thought, right? The, at, at the end of the film, you've got you've got uh, uh, Connor goes to Skynet looking for Kyle, and I'm like, why don't you have it be an unrelated quest? And then he comes across Kyle. Sure. Yes. And right, so he's like, "What's your name?" And he's like, "Kyle Reese." And at that moment, first time in the movie, that glint of recognition. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. And he's like, I got to I got to help him. I got to protect him, you know, and it would kind of tie in nicely with the whole thing where the resistance doesn't want him to go there, even though they know there's people that need to be saved. But he is right. so determined to to save humans that he's willing to possibly be blown up as long as it means he yeah. could potentially save these people. And in doing that, well, holy cow, he saved Kyle Reese. <laughs> that, exactly. You know? Yeah, I mean, because we we saw it earlier. Oh, we've identified Kylo Reese. We have to capture him again. Explain to me why Skynet would have that information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It makes no sense. If you're John Connor, wouldn't you keep that shit to yourself? Right, right, right. Yeah, you wouldn't want to put like a potential target on his back. Right. I mean, if it's, someone it's, again, it, yeah. Or sorry, I was just uh, say even a human who doesn't like. Connor's leading style could be like, well, then I'm going to go after Kyle, you know, like exactly yeah. right. That would be top, top secret information. Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, what would be interesting. Uh, William Wisher, the, the mm-hmm. guy who made significant contributions to the first Terminator and was a co screenwriter for Terminator two. Has anyone reached yeah. out to him? Just be like, what would you do? Yeah. I mean, maybe there's some sort of Cameron loyalty or I don't know, but like he's a, a significant part of the, the two films everybody loves. So, yeah, I don't know. What, what, does he have any ideas? <laughs> That's a good, good point. Oh, yeah. Um, I, he, he and uh, Cameron recorded a commentary track for T2, which is quite a great listen. I listened to that many moons ago. I, I should, Listen to that again. Speaking of many moons, we got just one moon right here. <laughs> moon blood good. Moon blood good. And again, it, th- maybe it's just a testament to the times, but I, I distinctly remember Mick G talking about the director's cut featuring boobs, B-E-W-B-S. I was thinking about that before we hopped on. I remembered that because I had forgotten there was an alternative or a, a director's cut. And then immediately I was like, oh, yeah, boobs. I, that's what I remember. That was the selling point. That was the, you know, the press release, <laughs> the AP <laughs> press release for the director's cut of Terminator Salvation, uh, B-E-W-B-S, like boobs. <laughs> the, the boobs edition. <laughs> I know. Isn't that so 2009, by the way? It really, that's what I'm saying. It's such a testament to that moment. Yep. Where, uh, again, like the people involved with the movie, not like random, you know, uh, you know. Internet uh, sites. Yeah, right. Like yeah. TitLover69 on Reddit, like <laughs> it, with screen grabs. No, no. This is the filmmakers saying, hey, <laughs> you little leaguers, just wait, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then there's all, it is kind of funny in fandoms, and I, I sort of get it sometimes, but just the a movie that... It has to be rated R for it to be the version they think is going to be worthy, mm-hmm. which is kind of a funny thing. So then you 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 find these directors feeling like, oh, man, but it's it's the hardest PG-13 ever made. Or they'll be like, oh, don't worry, the director's cut's coming to DVD. And I remember watching that Die Hard 4 director's cut, and it's literally just a bunch of like F-bombs that aren't even on screen. Like it's, you know, like <laughs> really like ADR them later over people's shoulders. And it's like, Really? Like, is it, did this really do any difference? <laughs> I don't know. The, the scene of uh, a couple minutes ago here where, um, she, where Blair, she's like, Oh, I, I just love the sound of your heartbeat, mm-hmm. you know, and she's got to curl up next to him. I'm like, uh, ugh. I, I hate, I hate stuff like that where it's, it's essentially forcing a relationship. Yes. Yeah. She says something like, I, Oh, she goes for the body heat. Yeah. Which is funny. Cause I was like, I guess he is still tissue, but I, I, I when I was rewatching it, I thought she was going to be like, Oh, you're a little cold, yeah. you know, because you're cold. Right. Half machine. But, uh, but she does <laughs> mention Chekhov's heart. 
Yep. <laughs> Check off, sorry. She's like, what a what a strong heartbeat. I, I imagine if anything were to happen to that heart or it needed to be taken out and repurposed, it would continue beating because that is a heck of a heartbeat. <laughs> So Sam Worthington was was uh, personally recommended to McG by James Cameron. Interesting. I mean, it just he, he got that he was the Cameron stamp of approval. I was going to say that, but he was even in conversation with someone making a Terminator sequel. I mean, that's it's not like he yeah was yeah you know. yeah he he spoke with Cameron, and I think Cameron Cameron has been remarkably magnanimous about terminators not involving him shockingly so for right personality he has yeah uh i think i think he's sort of just he's like look i've i've done my bit and i can drive myself crazy Mm -hmm. or i can just sort of let people run with it and i and i respect that yeah um i remember going to the uh wonder con this is back when we used to have it up here before y'all people down there stole it from us (laughs) Uh, <laughs> yeah, you bastards. Uh, and and Mick G was there. Christian Bale was there. Wow, and they had footage from it. And really, ta- you know, and and I really like Mick G is like, you know, I know people are skeptical, but I want you to know we're trying really hard. And you know, I was like, I-, I believe in you, Mick G. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and then you watch the movie, you're like, oh god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I swear, if this was, it wouldn't be great or remarkable, but. If this was just like future war movie yeah. with Christian yeah. Bale and they were trying to start something, it'd be at least intriguing. That's I, I just to, yeah, I think you had the same thought I did, which is like, really this movie is brought down in many ways by the franchise necessity mm-hmm. of being that thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, it's okay to kind of evoke that thing we know while being something totally new. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, you know, that's how you get new stuff. You know, that's uh, that's how the Matrix happens, you know. Totally. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is <laughs> actually I have to say when I knew he was walking through here, this magnetic minefield was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually felt it. I was like, uh, not a good idea. So the the thing with Sam Worthington, who a lot of people dog on him, they're like, he's a bad actor. And I don't. I don't think that. I think I think he's fine. I think he's fine in most things. However, he doesn't. Uh, you know, he doesn't distinguish himself necessarily. You know, I kind of agree with you. I I am certain if we went back and checked the tapes, I have not been all the time super nice to him. Um, <laughs> but that was my young and snarky years, and I I I see what he offers. And I, well, certainly, you know, we just saw him a couple weeks ago in Horizon, uh-huh. and I think I said on our show, I'm like, I really liked him in Horizon. I wish know? they'd given him more to do in Horizon. I think, yeah, I agree. I think he's, yeah, he's he's interesting, and I think it just depends on what you give him to do. Yeah, um, and especially uh, now, in now the the romance in Horizon. I, yeah. I was like, yeah, I buy that. He seems like a sweet guy that I could see a a widow feeling safe with, and yeah, even if you didn't like how they ended up there. Yeah, I thought, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, his attempts to 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 uh, you know marble mouth his way through an American accent in this movie <laughs> are it's like, dude, somebody should have called cut and brought in like a dialect coach or something. Sure, sure, or just let him have a British accent. I don't know, or just have him, yeah, give him an Australian accent. Or Australian, yeah, yeah. You know, Bryce Dallas Howard. I'm glad she's getting the residuals, but like, dude. It, it, this is honestly, I, I, sh- what they give her to do in this movie is, I'm going to say, is embarrassing. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I don't know if, again, that's the thing. It would be fascinating. I would never take the time, but to go through all the drafts and sort right. of see what was there, the concessions that were made, where we ended up, I'd be very curious. I mean, this too. Do you believe for one second that Bryce is playing the same character Claire Danes played in in T three? No. No, but I mean, as long as you're going to have, and I, I have nothing wrong with Bryce Dallas Howard, but give her something to do. No, or, she's fine. That's my point. I mean, I mean, give her a character to play. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, I like Kate. Kate is a veterinarian. Yeah. In in the third one, in this one, she's doing heart surgery. 
<laughs> right, 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 right. Right, and, th- and this is where, Brian, this is like, when you think about it, the stuff that make that that stands out that 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 it remains memorable from the first two films is not just the action sequences Mm -hmm. it's to me it's like it's it's the terminator under the car working on the thing and john is just lying next to him and he's like yeah sometimes i see her crying because she's thinking about my dad or right and it gives you this like window into john dude that is the thing i think everybody keeps forgetting not not people but people who are making the sequels that stuff even the the romance in in one is very palpable yep. and like exactly and yes in two there's so many human moments and even dyson and his family as little as we really ever see them together we know he's a family man and we see their little household before everything's torn apart and it's just right. that, I, that's the stuff they don't either want to take the time or they're not thinking about those things but that's why everybody adores that movie right the stuff is just as important and memorable you know, in, in in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, there's there's a bit where you know we're in the the human settlement with Gary Oldman and those people. Yeah, and they're out of power, and then you know Jason Clark's folks they get the power to come back on, right? And then Gary Oldman's uh, uh, tablet turns on, mm-hmm. and he starts flipping through pictures of his family, which he hasn't seen obviously since the power went out, mm. and then he just starts to cry. Yeah, right. That's great. And I'm like, give me a moment like that in mm-hmm. this. Give me, give Bryce Dallas Howard a moment like that. Maybe she's, she's looking at some pictures and she, uh, you know, she's telling John like something like, do you think we'll ever get this back or something? You know, something, right? Like, like they're looking at a picture of a date they were on or something, yeah. you know? And then like, yeah, do you think we'll ever have dinner in a restaurant again? Or, so, you know, it's not a great version, but something like, no, but yeah, you know? Yeah, and then see them hold hands and we're like, oh, they're they're actually a couple, you know? Right. Yeah, and it'd make him feel human too. That's what he's fighting for. That's why he gets so charged up and maybe he gets a little too charged up, this version, but like, why? Well, because he he's going to give every everything in every, in every cell of his body to, to get that back. That's what he's fighting for. Yeah, I well, I think, and the movie alludes to it a little bit, right? This idea that, the resistance is willing to take on collateral damage yes. and and john is like no we're not the machines we don't think like that well that's what makes him a great leader mm-hmm. the problem is is we don't get a real window into what the resistance leadership what the, what they're uh, think about it they the entire movie the resistance folks are just sitting in that submarine yeah we never have any concept of what they're actually doing mm-hmm. yeah right what is the resistance? So is it is it just in the California? Right. Is it all across the United States? Like what is it, right? And then and then why is Skynet doing this? Like why is it gathering up all these people? What like we know that this is part of the mythology because Reese alludes to it, where it, you know it it puts like UPC codes on people's arms or whatever. But why? What's going on? What's the rationale? You know, like what's the sense that you know this is. <laughs> See if you see if you track with me on this. My problem with the resistance in this in this film is they seem a little too MTV. <laughs> what do you mean? Like I don't get the sense that this is a ragtag group. Like look at mm. Comet, kind of a badass, you know. And, Clothes fit so well. you know. Moon Bloodgood is like a hot action chick, you know. That is a very good point. Yeah. Like in in the first film, there's a great scene where where we see it's Kyle remembering back to not like one of the big action scenes in the future, but it's just him in the resistance hideout. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you have stuff like somebody's watching a TV with like a broken screen. Yeah, but where you think it's a TV, right? And then it reveals it's just yeah. a flame inside to keep in the, yeah. the flick right? on their faces is from the flame. And, and you, you get a sense of the desperation. And I think we we needed that more, you know. That's, we need a sense of fallout. Is there fallout? Doesn't seem like it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they look very healthy. They look. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good. Oh, and by by the way, so at the end of Terminator Three, John is in that that hardened facility underground, right? Mm, yes. When the world that bunker uh, ends. Yeah. Yep. So so 
these tapes from Sarah? Did he keister these tapes? Ah! <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> That's a great point. I mean, did he have like a satchel or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. That is a great point. That is hilarious. Um, like, like, had she squirreled them away? Uh, you know. In in little hide, hidey holes, like she did, you know the the, the great the the in the mortuary that was like the the casket with the weapons. Maybe she did that with tapes. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. I and then know. in the you know 2018, he's like, "What? How the heck am I supposed to play these?" <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um. By the way, I just going back a little bit, Marcus, the way he's sort of strung up over that pit. Where yeah. very makeshift, like the axle from a car and chains, and I, I actually thought that looked kind of cool. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, and then having Moon Blood Good, well, them having Common shoot at him, you know, yeah. he looks like a human, but now we see his chest is completely opened, and we see he is almost you know eighty percent machine inside. Which again, I have a huge logic problem with. That doesn't my my brain cannot accept that. That's just too too far. See, I. I see it as he is, he, he's not, he, he is a Terminator the same way a T-800 is a Terminator. It's just his skin has been grafted in the shape of Marcus. And unlike a T-800, he believes he's Marcus. It, it was, so what's his brain? Is it a chip where they took his memories and everything and put it into a, into circuitry? Does he have a brain? Like what? I don't know. They don't. They don't get into that. It's too weird to me. I, I just personally, I just find it. Uh, well, I mean, at the very least, create a narrative framework to make us understand what he is, which they don't do. Yeah, but oh, I was going right. to say. So yeah, common shooting him like that. I think is really uh, good. I think it, it, it yes. it's kind of a cool way of showing how they feel about cyborgs. It's it's cool to show Marcus, this poor guy who he still believes he's human, but he's something else and he can be shot this way. And just seeing him hanging there going, what is going on? Right. You know, I, I think that's a really interesting emotional moment, honestly. And then, but it is kind of funny then like moon blood good shows up and she's like, I'll take care of this handsome sack of crap. Yeah. You know, like, don't worry. I got she's it. She's so stupid. She's so stupid. And then right? Common's like, Isn't yeah, it? okay. Yeah. Where were you? Were okay, see you later. <laughs> yeah, you were flirting with it earlier, but you just shot at it. So uh, I'll leave you alone with him. <laughs> we're, we're good. Yeah. She, like, I mean, I mean, she's a resistance fighter. She knows what Skynet's doing. Why would she trust him? It feels like in another movie, she would just keep visiting him. And if he was right. scheduled for execution, maybe she would right. intervene. But at this point, yeah, for her to not understand what he is and to to just let him free cu- just cuz. Right. It's not quite there yet. Here's the other thing, okay? Earlier in the film, right, when when Connor finds out he's a terminator, he's looking right at his face. He's like, "You you tried to come after my mother, Sarah Connor, <laughs> my father, Kyle Reese." You know, it's like you know he's a terminator. <laughs> right, right. You don't think he's connected to Skynet? You know what I mean? Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. In the first film, <laughs> you tried to attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the later non-James Cameron film, I defeated you. you know. Yeah. <laughs> then he came back. Only this time, he was a protector. And then, he, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I developed an emotional attachment to it that Skynet has looked to exploit. <laughs> But I ain't falling for that, buddy. <laughs> no, if my name ain't John Connor, let me say again, my name, me, John Connor, will never fall for this. <laughs> uh, this is fun. So, hey, we, we, we haven't mentioned at all the uh, the most famous part about this movie, which is not in the actual movie. <laughs> what? what? Which is... Uh, which is a uh, Christian Bale's famous, uh, you know, <laughs> we wow. didn't mention that at all. Hour 10 in or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good for you, <laughs> dude. I mean, I will never forget living in L.A. And then it was on K-Rock, the station out here. Yeah. They were like, wow, we actually have this interesting audio captured from the new Terminator movie. And they played it. And I thought it was a bit. At first. And I, I was like, what? And then it, it was so, th- there was no joking. And it sounded mm-hmm. like Christian Bale and hearing him just 
berate this guy, just going ape shit. It, Shane Hurlbut, he's the DP. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. But I remember hearing that and going, oh, this is not a joke. And it's weird they're playing it on the morning radio. Um, yeah. And then I remember a day later or two, Christian Bale called in to K-Rock. No, it, so it, before that, in between, it became kind of a bit. For so on Kevin and Bean, it was Ralph Garman, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So he would play Christian Bale. Oh, so they would do this thing where they'd be like, "Oh, you know, actually, we got we got Christian Bale on the phone, and it's Ralph Garman," and <laughs> and then he would he it would be like, "Yeah, so so uh, Christian, I guess you're working on it." And then they like make a noise. He's like, "What's that noise?" Oh, sorry, we just moved a cup. Well, good for you, you know. And then it became like this recurring character. Right, right. Like so then, so soundboard. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So, and it's just, it was Ralph Garman doing the impression. And then uh, basically Christian Bale heard this. Mm. Recurring thing, and so he calls in and, and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> 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 yeah. And I mean, to his credit, I mean, he fell on the sword. He's like, look, I screwed up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, you, if you go to YouTube, you can, you can hear him. I mean, just genuinely. And it's one of those things where, look, I believe everybody has a bad day. Yeah. And I know I would not want to be measured against my worst day, right? And I, I believe that's what happened. Yeah, I think because everything else we've seen from him over the years, you know, it's not like there's other bad behavior and right. telephones at people and things like that, right? It's, so you, you willing to believe it was a bad day. And he also said that they had made up. Yes. If you, you know, if you believe the well, story. That said, they also never work together again. So there's that. You know? Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> it's like they, they went through their thing and we caught a glimpse of it. And by the way, I'm not defending it. I don't think it's ever okay to talk to someone that way, yeah. but you know, we, we don't know the context. We didn't, or you, we do know the context actually. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Like context we, is ter uh, Christian Bale was in Terminator Salvation. We can expect he was a bit pissed off about the situation. <laughs> right, right. No, again, I this is not an excuse. Even when you're mad, there's no excuse to go that unhinged on somebody. But it's apparently they had made up and whatever. And then can you imagine having that snippet played yes. on the radio yep. later? And we have bits of it memorized to this day. <laughs> Oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll never forget being in the car driving to work and hearing Christian Bale, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, like this is a thing. Yep, that he felt, you know, Christian, and again, Christian Bale, the height of Christian Bale, like after Dark Knight, I, and he felt compelled to call into this morning radio station and address this. This is crazy. Yeah, and he said that, you know, John Connor is at this dark place, and I was so deep in the character's head that it screwed me up. And I'm like, hey, you know, I, I get it. Uh, I, I, I can see how maybe that happened. What, what I would only say is, unfortunately, it was in service of, of this role. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, we know he's a method actor. We know he gets really into it. And I'm like, you know, I, I wish all that emotional turmoil you endured made the movie more agreeable yeah and honestly i have a note on all of his aggressive uh, acting in this movie <laughs> I'd, I'd say <laughs> scale it back a little bit but uh you know it, it is interesting i i don't remember who it was but i was reading something the other day and i know a lot of times actors get crap because it's like man it's really hard sometimes and we get kind of wrapped up in our work and it's exhausting and and people are like oh really how, how <laughs> difficult for you oh good for you <laughs> yeah, actually i was avoiding saying that <laughs> and, uh, but i kind of believe it i mean if you really are trying to pretend you're telling your so this is the point they were making you are telling your body that a beloved person is dying hmm. and all day your emotions your body is believing that you are suffering today mm -hmm. you're doing mm -hmm. that so you can execute that on film and so at the end of the day even though it's not true your body experienced it your your brain kind of tricked mm -hmm. itself into experiencing sure, it sure. and i i don't know i thought that was interesting i i don't think about acting a ton but i was like that's that's got to take a toll in some ways right and, and affect you and maybe even affect your home life in some ways yeah, that, 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 I mean, I, I, you can, you can understand why there are many actors who aren't able to have a lasting personal relationship. Yeah, yeah, and then I get, I mean, as long as we're talking about this moment, I guess what it was was Bale was acting, and 
the DP was fiddling with lights. Yeah, he he was he was adjusting the lighting scheme on the fly within the actor's eyeline, mm-hmm. and so it was screwing up Bale's concentration. And it wasn't the first time. This has happened multiple times. Mm. And and my sense is that you know he's kind of like Mick G. You know, like are you going to say something about this? Mm. And so to me anyway, and I I mean, I'm not an expert, but it feels like this was something if the director had been keeping a tighter ship, Mm. it wouldn't have reached this point. Right. Because this feels like something, right. It feels like this was a conversation that the DP and the director should have had already. Right. You know? Hmm. So, so this here, uh, this, this is the point where I'm like, dude, why are you yelling so much? (laughs) <laughs> all right and it and it struck me i'm like they shot it to be in the trailer mm. you know what i mean it's a great trailer moment where he's like we are all dead right <gasps> oh yeah my god are they all dead you know <laughs> right right but right there but it feels so emotionally disconnected from everything else right you know right and again, I just I don't like this whole hand over your badge, give me your gun thing that the that the the general character does. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. This is very organized. Right. I don't know. Or or it, it, should, it may be more in universe for this. It wouldn't I mean, what do they want to lose a person who can help them? Right. It, it would be almost more like if I see you out there, like we're going to settle this in person yeah you know something right like i i i think again i I just going back to what i said earlier this idea of that the resistance has this military hierarchy it just it strikes me odd because to me the the idea is that john connor comes in and he creates a new way right and they were all these 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 disparate groups that weren't connected but he united he's the william wallace you know (laughs) yeah yeah you know I love this though. I do love his sway over the people. Yes. Um, I agree with you that I wish this was reimagined a little bit, but in the version that we have, it's kind of cool that these people look to him and they're getting, I mean, I was joking about it earlier, but he's sharing tips with them and they're learning things. Oh, look, they're, they're, they're oh, romantically attached. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, we know that they listen to him and so, He's like, look, I know you have these orders, but I am asking you. Yeah. And uh, I like that moment. Uh, 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 here it comes. Here it comes, Brian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said the thing. <laughs> Wait, how did you set it up? What should I tell who? What should I tell your men oh. um, about right. why you're gone? Now, now this I I have to admit I, I this is the, the kind of member berry I don't mind where um you've got the the Guns N' Roses song playing yeah yeah I mean it's a little on the nose but I agree it, the, hearing that song makes me happy yeah I mean it's it's not obnoxious you know no it's kind of fun too it like humanizes them a little bit like yeah you right. love that song. So, so here's my thought about the Moto Terminator. Yeah. Why would Skynet design a motorcycle Terminator which can easily be ridden by a human? <laughs> I know, I know. I know. What's the point? <laughs> I don't know. See, I think, I think the, the question I have and the opportunity was really there to get into what are Skynet's goals? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, like, like, what's the goal? What's the end game? What's the right? Because because in movies uh, one and two, whatever window we get into Skynet is is only through the the resistance figure, so Kyle and and the T eight hundred, right? Mm-hmm. And it's 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 giving us just practical information for that specific scenario. But th- here we say, okay, well, w- what does Skynet want with humans? What does Sky n- n- now that Skynet has m- had humans go to war with each other? What's what? What's the point now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, is it is it the Matrix? Is it oh we want to turn people into batteries? Could go along with the barcode thing you were talking about, right? Yeah. But why? You know? 
Yeah, no, that's a that's a good question. That would be fun to learn to learn that and uh, come up with some new goals to stop them. Yeah, and and again, I I think that's that's the dilemma here. Now, supposedly, this movie was meant to be the start of another trilogy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which that's like everything, <laughs> of course. Oh, oh, it's a trilogy, and and I'm like, you know, fair, but you still got to make the one that's satisfying in and of itself. Yeah, right. Um, it's a little bit like like the new the new uh, apes movie, the King, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, right? What what I appreciated about that movie is that if you watch that completely separate from whatever came before and anything that may come after, it's still within the four walls of that movie. You get an experience to say, well, I, I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that's th- this movie relies. It It's not just like leaning on. It is reliant on your knowledge of John Connor and the Terminator mythology. Right. So if you haven't seen the other movies, don't don't even bother. Right, right. And then it's saying, oh, and there's more shit coming, so keep watching. Well, then what did we get out of this? Right. You know? Man, I'm so... I would love to see the outline that they had. Right. Um, You know, it's funny. I was just scrolling through a couple things on Wikipedia, and it said, so extensive were the rewrites that Alan Dean Foster decided to rewrite the entire novelization. Wow. <laughs> because it changed so much. He had already written a novelization of what they had set out to do, but it changed so much. He had to rewrite the entire novelization of the movie. That's fascinating. <laughs> See, like why, you know what I mean? Like this is, this is just the abject cynicism. And we know, like I'm, it's like, uh, w- w- we know this, this is how the industry works, but it's like, yeah. oh, we're locked into a release date. Oh, there's a writer strike. Well then, you know, last rewrite wins, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, why not just wait? Wait. Yeah, because till... then it's not a story you have to tell. Exactly. It's a story you need to tell by a certain date. So it, right. whatever story, like you said, whatever pens down, that's what we're going with. Right. And it's like, why don't you just I mean, clearly what you ended up with, it's it's a wounded film forever. See, that's what I always say. Like I, I understand the business side of it and quarterly reportings and things like that. Yes. You need to have output and you need to make money, but you are damaging something in the long yeah. run. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is, and it's also a beloved franchise. This is something that could, could be a cash cow for years and years and years to come. So if you screw this up, you are damaging something that could be a, a money printing machine. So just get it right. Get it right the first time. Yeah. And then you, it'll pay off so much more. I mean, and and that's it's like you're you're oh we got our trilogy well are you sure you've got it mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah <laughs> it's funny and then this is gonna end and then I'm still gonna be like eh, but, but not as bad as I remembered <laughs> <laughs> no I mean I I will say just as like a like something that you you pour into your eyeballs I mean I I think it, it's it's I, again, I I I didn't hate it when it was done. Yeah, because it's not terribly executed. There's some cool set pieces. Yeah, it's just when you try to reconcile it with the other Terminator films that you start getting frustrated. Exactly. Yeah. But man, I would just oh, there's something so about the design of those those uh the skeleton the metal skeletons just seeing mm-hmm. the one that we just saw a second ago like just looking around on guard it's just i don't know man it's weird because they're so like terrifying looking but they do yeah. weirdly sort of warm my heart like just seeing them i just because i think it comes comes from my youth or, or my childhood yeah it's just something so singular about them they don't that's what i complain about aliens in movies these days because they all ever since cloverfield look like digital bugs right Yes, <laughs> I guess you could say Starship <laughs> Troopers, but um, yeah, Starship Troopers. Yeah, but uh, this is just so iconic looking, and they're still scary to me as an adult. Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to round a corner and see one of those things. Yeah, they're just so cool. No, I, I mean, for me, my iconic movie monsters of of my childhood are the Alien, the Predator, and the Terminator endoskeleton. Right. 
you know, because I didn't watch Freddy and Jason and all that stuff. These were mm-hmm. these were my monsters, you know. That's uh, yeah, same. I agree for for the same reasons. Yeah. Well, here I, she's back. I, yeah, I I think I I think giving Skynet. I don't I don't have a problem with giving Skynet some kind of a avatar that that you interface with, but the idea that that. Oh, I took on this face because you know it. Like, well, he he met her for like a minute. <laughs> That'd be funny. He's like, huh? <laughs> yeah, who are you? you know? Right, I know. Literally interacted with you for 30 seconds before I died. <laughs> He's like, I don't know you. And then he the Skynet readjusts and she's like cancer patient version. And then Oh, would, right. Oh, you. Okay. You know, actually, I was regretting what I said to you <laughs> for the last 12 minutes of my life. You know, like, it's my last awkward moment. You were my last awkward moment. It that that line, that's what death tastes like. Doesn't that feel like whatever earliest iteration of Marcus was created as? It somehow just survived all the drafts. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it alludes because, to a personality we never get to see. <laughs> exactly. Because this guy doesn't seem like the guy from the beginning. No. And we've not seen anything throughout the film to warrant a change. Uh, that's that's the biggest problem with this movie, I think. Yeah. I don't understand why he's doing anything he's doing. Yeah. And, and I mean, especially leading up to sort of the choice Marcus makes at the end. I get, I'm just like, I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't get it. I genuinely don't understand what would lead him to make that that decision. See, I mean, if we knew, like maybe he was his, he, he died purposeless for some reason that we would be informed about yeah. in the beginning. And then now he can die with purpose or something, you know, or maybe he... See, but- but and, and and I mean just just to correlate to that the problem is we don't really see anything from John in this movie and certainly Marcus mm-hmm. doesn't see anything from John in this movie to make him say this is the essential man yes this man cannot die exactly the lo- the cause is lost right good point right? good point <laughs> yes um we did just see that but that'd be funny actually if he just saw the moment we saw where he saw the john connor saw the girl and he's like you mouth <laughs> dude i don't know if that guy actually becomes a leader everybody gets reverent about <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah like you know you you needed a, at least a, a couple moments showing his like soft spoken like his kindness yes with with the resistance his humanity yeah yeah <sighs> so now that submarine has been destroyed is that yes. i guess what the sequel will be there is no leadership so maybe john will become the leadership from in the shadows radio broadcast to i i guess right i guess that was the plan yeah although mick g had alluded to the idea of bringing in some kind of a time travel element mm. uh into the sequel like I'm actually curious because yeah, this was meant to be the start of its own trilogy, and what what would have been was the idea the end the the final part of the trilogy ends with Kyle Reese going through the time portal and and Maybe. then you 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 tie things together like that. We do get the time machine in one of the next ones, right? In Genesis, yeah. Man. Well, and and in well. In Genesis and Dark Fate, I guess, right? So funny. I, I remember very little. <laughs> um, you know, I've got to say, I was kind of amazed that this uh, 84 Schwarzenegger looked as good as he did for ni- or 2009. No, I agree. I don't think it looks terrible. No. And frankly, yeah. I think we haven't really come that far. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, I remember being shocked when people found out that the Rogue One Tarkin wasn't real sure sure <laughs> I was like, really? wow okay that's pretty yeah um, no it, it, it doesn't look terrible and i think i think as a way to incorporate him as a little nod to it that that it, it's fine i don't mind it no it's yeah it's fine it's fun again it's just big picture i would have just held off on putting the t800 in this at all yeah yeah Ugh. <laughs> <coughs> excuse me i was like does he feel pain 
Well, so here's the thought. The sky is like, you'll not be given a second chance. And I'm like, well, he's, he's a terminator. Why don't you just shut him down? Like, mm. you know, like cut off the Wi-Fi or whatever. Right. Right. I, I mean, you know, like, because, because they never define the parameters of what he is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says, I'm a man, right? I'm not a machine. Well, what is he? Yeah. Is he a chip or is he a brain? That's, I need to know. I mean, even if we got a scene earlier when he's in captivity where you got Bryce Howard looking at like a x-ray scan or something, be like, I've never seen anything like this. He's got a human brain, but mm. a metal skeleton. Something like that, right? Exactly that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because then we would even understand the sacrifice more. Right. And... Like he's not. Yeah, it's 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 an he is an actual person, and it's kind of like th- that sense of like I I might look like a machine, but I'm a man. I choose to be a man. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, I would like that. Um, there's Kyle using the advice that he heard John give on the radio. That's right. The weakness in the back of their neck. Thanks, love doctor. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny that they, they had like collars, like Love Line. Like, um, <laughs> so there's a terminator outside. Um, all right, all right. Now, now listen, uh, Kyle. Is your is your name Kyle? All right, now now listen, Screwball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if people have heard Loveline or haven't heard Loveline, that is a perfect. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. This see again, and maybe I'm delighting in this right now because I am seeing iconography that I recognize. no, absolutely. Oh. And I'm, I mean, just as as an illustration of what people in the the future war had to deal with, like the the T800 is mm. very very difficult to take down. I I, I like that. Yeah. Like yeah. e- even here, although I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, where's the laser, where's the laser guns? Can, is it too much to ask for some freaking laser guns? <laughs> well, that's what, cause at the beginning he shoots a Terminator dead with bullets, which yeah. he can't do. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that, well, it's an earlier model, I suppose. But yeah, with these newer ones. Yeah. When do the lasers get introduced? I guess. Like, why wouldn't you? Why? Yeah. Why is, why do they got like uh, machine guns and stuff? <laughs> Zachy. If I knew, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's the weird thing. It's like I, 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 I want to be very clear. I'm not saying you have to be strenuously beholden to what's happened before, but I'm like, there needs to be some, some in-universe explanation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say we're earlier in the history, so maybe those get introduced later. But i don't know that's the thing yeah. with getting ahead of yourself like well in the 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 planned trilogy that will for sure happen <laughs> you, know, you, you think of the opening three minutes of terminator 2 and those the sounds of the <laughs> and seeing yeah. those hunter killers in the sky and like that's what i'm here for man that's what i'm here for. yep yep so can't you give us that <laughs> And like, yeah, you know, like the cars with skeletons inside of them and understanding what we lost. I don't know. I think that's the dilemma fundamentally, right? Is that once you, once you remove your story from the quote unquote present and you set it in the future there, you sort of miss the point of those earlier films, which is that this, we want desperately to avoid this future, Mm -hmm. right? It is terrible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't want to live there. But once you're in it, you have to sort of make it action movie cool. Mm -hmm. And I think those are two ends that are in conflict with each other. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now that said, I do, I do like how this, this whole sequence is, is homaging the end of the first film with the, the endoskeleton stalking around the uh, factory. I was literally just about to say that. That's funny. We're both feeling that because it's finding a clever way to, yeah, give us imagery that we have previously enjoyed, but with a new context. Yeah. It works for me. Well, and especially considering that like this right here, I'm just shot. And and in, in the first film, it's Kyle who's 
doing this. Mm -hmm. So in a weird way, Kyle is just just out of sight of his own future. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I've said before, Kyle Reese is just one of my favorite characters of of the franchise, and it's just because just the the inherent tragedy yeah that he represents you know yeah and and michael bean is so effective at just conveying the, the his sadness you know yeah and i say you know uh the, you know when he turns to uh, linda hamilton he's like i came across time for you sarah i love you right mm-hmm. and you believe it i mean it's just it's so heartbreaking mm-hmm. you know and and I think I've said before, like for me, the, the, the version of the Terminator theme in the first film, it, I feel like that's the Kyle Reese theme in that one. Mm. Cause it sounds there's, it's sad. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, and that's, that's the problem is that they've never really figured out what to do because in this context and, and in the next one too, it's just, Oh, well, he's the guy who's got to go stup my mom. <laughs> right. Right. You got to right. stay alive long enough to, to, to slip it to her, you know? that's funny you know not great (laughs) (laughs) well see that's funny you could run into these potentially creepy scenes where it's like tell me more about your mom john you know like because obviously he does fall in love with her sort of through a picture that's right yeah seeing that play out it's take a delicate touch i think (laughs) it'd be funny he hands the picture to him and, and kyle's just like I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and you just you just see John kind of like, Ugh. I mean, you know, I guess, but uh. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 uh, it's better spoken, I think, than uh, executed. Than executed. <laughs> yeah. So this is a good point. So Ugh. so Marcus has a human heart. Yeah. So then the question is why other than, well, he needs it to give to John at the end. That's what I'm saying. You know, it reminds me of the RoboCop remake where we see him and he's just like a head and a spine. Yes. And I was like, I mean, that's stuck with me to this. That's the only thing that stuck with me from that movie. (laughs) It's horrifying. But it's like, that's about all it is to continue living, but it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And so is that what he is? That's, that's my question. I mean, that's kind of what I'm picturing in a way. Yeah, uh, he's at least a heart and presumably a brain. Yeah. And immaculately recreated skin. <laughs> yeah, but but to what end, right? That's my question, especially considering that that Helena Bonham Carter comes to him in 2003. So uh-huh. It's not like, oh, you know, judgment day is about to happen, so can you sign yourself over? Like what what was the plan back then? Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right? Because now, oh, he's the TH. Okay. Well, <laughs> right. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense, especially considering that Cyberdyne, my sense from T2, is that it's like a software company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they wouldn't even be thinking about uh, biological implementation of, of whatever they're working on, you know? Right, until there was corruption. Right or, or, or interference, right with with the machines, because because the prologue is set in 03. and shortly thereafter, Scott. That's the other thing, because because in in T three they say that s- the government purchased all of Cyberdyne's assets. Mm-hmm. So, at what point did Cyberdyne stop being a its own thing and become a government affiliate? Yeah. Why am I? Why am I overthinking it? <laughs> this is stuff I think about. This is good. By the way, that's the thing. When you come up with an unstoppable killing machine, you mm-hmm. have to keep coming up with ways to stoppable it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's good. Here, here's here's John's uh, Indiana Jones on the Last Crusade moment right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how he got the scars. Yep. Which I remember thinking was cool. Yes, I agree. in the theater, I like it. Well, you know what what I think is cool is the actor Michael Edwards who plays John in that, you know, opening sequence of T2. Um where we just see him, you know, and Sarah's mm-hmm. talking over. He looks like Christian Bale. Like you you believe that Christian Bale would become that guy. Sure, yeah. Which I think that the in terms of that casting that that worked. Yep. I agree. And and as far as the Terminator, I like that this keeps that that 
thread alive about how you think they're dead, but goddamn, they just keep coming back. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I think it's very clever, the sort of molten steel or whatever it is, but then freezing it immediately, and that's a way to at least slow it down significantly. To slow it down, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I... This is good. Third act's pretty good in this I, movie. I, I agree. Oh. Um, at least in terms of execution. I mean, I think I think structurally, the story kind of is, is hanging together by a thread. Well, everything that got us here is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the third act itself is fun. No, it's, it's staged well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's staged well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I almost feel like this thing kind of killed McGee's career. He's had a very interesting career. Remember he made a football movie oh, with uh, yes. Matthew Fox? And McConaughey. Isn't McConaughey in it? That could be. It's We Are Marshall. We Are Marshall, yep. I was in the uh, the post offices for that back in the day. I remember that. Really? V- visiting someone for some reason. Wow. Um, which I never saw. But, uh, you know, you never the saw way, the I, movie? No, I was going to say, I have nothing against McGee. He seems like a very competent director. I, I agree with that. But uh, yeah, it's like yeah, it he is never McConaughey his thing, right? I mean, well, this is not I, his I mean, thing. maybe that sports movie wasn't his thing. He he crushed Charlie's Angels. I mean, I don't know that that movie would play the same way today. It but would not in its moments. It you, was. You know how I know it would not play today because they tried it a couple of years ago. Remember? But see, that's true. But that movie was just sort of a nothing burger in a way, <laughs> and like that movie was so perfect. The casting was the people of the moment. The style was the thing of the moment. It, it was, was sort of matrix. That moment. It was yeah. that moment. But they they also plussed, well, not plus like made it better. But they they added on like a candy colored sort of thing on top of the matrixness mm. of it all, and it was the perfect two thousand package. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what his thing is. Yeah. I, I, I think between Charlie's angels and we are Marshall and okay. So real quick. So is Skynet destroyed now? What, what does this ending signify? What does, what are, what are the terms of this victory? Yeah. Is it a factory? Is it the death star? You know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Because I thought this was Skynet headquarters or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, no, M- McGee, he did. Um, oh, the OC? He did the... He, oh, he was, that's uh, right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I, like he's, he's been trying to kind of, he hadn't really found like a lane, you mm-hmm. know. A lot, of, a lot of TV stuff. That makes sense. And I, or yeah. I could see him doing, you know, limited series kind of thing streaming stuff i mean like i said i, I think he's a perfectly fine director and he seems like a nice guy so i i, I, I hate too. picking on him yeah know? it's hard because you you have a name like that it sounds so pretentious <laughs> and and I, forgive me but potentially douchey you know what I mean? and poten- I mean, i'm saying like you hear that name and you go oh who's this guy you know what i mean you sort of picture yeah. like fred durst or something and <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, who, by the way, has also become like a pretty good director in his own right. He he did that. He directed that that John Travolta movie, which I think I'm the only guy who gave a good review to. Which one? Um, it's called The Fanatic. The Fanatic that rings a bell. Yeah, it's it's um, John Travolta and Devin Sawa. Okay. Yeah. And it was like it was very funny because it was literally like me and like the guy from the Wall Street Journal. We were the only guys who gave it a good review. And Devin Sawa tweeted tweeted at me. He's like, "You're invited to my party." <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, and by the way, Fred Durst, he's acting also. I remember he was in something recently, and people are like, "Yeah, he's pretty good." And so when I say that, I'm talking about the persona, the early 2000s persona of Fred Durst. But that's kind of what I picture when I when I think of right McGee. And so it's like, man, just. I don't know. I, I think he made it harder for himself a little bit. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. So this, you know, I mean, this is a huge moment. Did we earn it? I don't know, but the, it, no, it's, it's absolutely unearned. Right. So the idea here is Marcus is like, you know, that whole, the whole, everybody deserves a second chance, you know, let, let me, let me give my life. So, so humanity survives. Mm hmm. But based on just this movie, the four walls of this movie, what have we seen? What have we seen from John? And more importantly, what has Marcus seen from John to justify that choice? Mm-hmm. 
I just, I don't, I don't buy it. It, it defies human, human nature. <laughs> and even uh, the moon blood good character here being like, I don't know what life will look like without you now. <laughs> you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Based it, on what, you know? Yeah, so, but, so originally you, you alluded to this as scripted. Actually, they, were the, they had like the dark, dark ending. Yeah. Where they put Connor's skin on Marcus. I don't know how that idea ever got past being written on a post-it note. <laughs> I really don't. That is insane to me. Uh, and then he, at that point, his like secondary programming activates because he was Skynet all along and, and he kills everybody in the room. Wait, say that again. Say that again. That, that was the original, original ending. Connor was really Skynet all along, and he no, no, Marcus was Marcus. Oh, Marcus. Was. Mar- oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so like they put Connor's skin on him, and then he they're like John Connor lives, and then he like becomes an evil Terminator, and he kills everybody. So Common and and uh, Bryce Howard, everybody, and then just credits. <laughs> that sounds like that you know parody of a '70s film, <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> right? Yeah, like exactly. A, yeah. Uh, so th- th- that one they kiboshed, and then the the initial plan pretty far in was it would end with John Connor, Christian Bale dies, but his skin is put on Marcus. Yeah. And so the John Connor we've all heard about is actually Marcus, Wright. Why? Yeah. Would you ever think audiences would want that? Uh, it, right. So, that? so that the only reason that got kibosh is because it got leaked onto the internet. So they changed it. Well, I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for ain't a cool news. Yeah. <laughs> and but here's the problem here's the problem and and the, the the when you think about it even the title refers to that idea terminator salvation the idea being that marcus wright is the salvation mm-hmm. of the resistance because it's because of him that john connor is able to stay alive right the problem is you take that out and you sort of you lose whatever rationale led you towards the end of the movie. So then it ends and it, it's literally as John Connor's like, all right, well the war continues mm-hmm. and you say, and I, I, I remember what I felt as these credits started rolling. I'm like, what was the point of this whole thing that we went on? Yeah. What did, what did, what did John get out of this experience? If he's our main character. Yeah. What did he learn? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And it's it's also, I mean, maybe this is just being who cares. But after the injury that he sustained, and it sounds like if he doesn't get a new heart, he's going to die. It's a little weird. He's yeah. awake. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's I mean, I point. guess he, it's nice for him to be able to look the half human, half cyborg in the eye to sort of, oh, I was wrong about you. Yeah. But uh... <laughs> so, so after the, so so this movie cost. Um, uh, about a two hundred million dollars, and it made uh, about three hundred and seventy million mm-hmm. worldwide. So not enough to justify how much money they put in. Yeah, and and that sort of calls to mind how amusing it is to me that there's this everybody's trying to play keep away with the Terminator rights, mm. and and because because one company goes under and suddenly they're up for auction again, right? I think now currently. As we record this, they're with Skydance, I think. Okay. We'll see what happens there, right? But <sighs> yeah, what I keep coming back to is I'm like, you guys have drained the value out of this franchise. Yep. Yep. Uh, there's nothing left. I know. I mean, when you say a Terminator sequel or you say there's going to be another Terminator, it's not like, oh, oh, what's that going to be? It's more like, oh, what now? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, cause, cause when it, when it comes to, to this film, look at this, it, it, the, the movie comes out in May of, of Oh nine. And by September of that year, the rights were already up for sale because wow. the, the Halcyon company, I don't know, you know, you had, but it's a bunch of money people, not movie people, not story people. Mm hmm. And they had no, they, they, they only thought in terms of, oh, we got to lock in all the ancillaries and everything else, but they didn't think in terms of what's the actual movie that we're making. Right. Right. So it goes from Halcyon to, well, who did the next one? I think, I think that was Skydance, right? Mm. I don't even know. Yeah. 
uh, Megan Ellison, Annapurna. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Annapurna got the rights, and then David Ellison. Man, it must be nice to be like rich white people. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I Where, know, right? Yeah, I want to yeah, buy a Terminator. She's got, she's got her movie production company, and then her brother's got his production company. I know. Um, but yeah, currently, after as of uh, as of uh, uh, 2019, the Terminator rights are are with Skydance. So so now that Skydance and Paramount are merging, I guess that's where the franchise sits. Well, I was about to say maybe give us well they have given us some time now, but by choice or not, but maybe you come up with a a really great hook, and then in a, a couple years you you try again, but. I think the window of interest or caring about it could be closing as well. You know, you, it will only appeal to people like us of a certain vintage, right? Who are endeared to the first two good movies. I would say that Dark Fate was your last at bat. Yeah. I think at this point, any goodwill is gone. Right. For new ones. Right. You know, that, you know, that being said, you know what? I, I, I will I will contradict myself. If you want to come in and do something entirely different for t- for TV, Zachy, we're like on the same. I was like, well, I don't know. With streaming, maybe you could find like a corner <laughs> of the world and like right? come up with a series. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, and there yeah. is the, there's the anime version that's coming this, out on Netflix. this new anime August. thing, which which looks decent from what I saw. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, but uh, wow. <laughs> you know what i've 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 said on the show i have wanted an excuse to go back and rewatch these movies because i've always left disappointed but i am charlie brown with the football with these things even to the point of maybe if i rewatch them i might enjoy them a little more and i i don't remember them very well so i am enjoyed seeing this one again and kind of having an updated opinion on it and then also i want to see the other the other two well, so so this is my question, and I guess you kind of alluded to it. You said you hadn't seen it the whole way through since the theater, so 15 years ago. Yeah. So how how has your opinion been updated, if at all? I would just say, it, it again, I if, if you said Terminator Salvation and the Christian Bale thing, I think I would remember it looking very dusty, you know, like yellow, dusty, and Bale yelling a lot, and that I wasn't <laughs> a fan. And I truly, I it wasn't as bad as I remember as a movie about the future. Um, but really sadly lacking in terms of being a Terminator movie. I mean, the tone is very cold, not a lot of humanity. Like I said, even with the characters, which is really sad because that is what makes Terminator two. So, you know, amazing to me is the humanity. I mean, it is violent. It's a violent movie. It's an action film. It's a chase picture, but like the humanity is 50% of that movie as well. The levity. Yeah. There's jokes. You know, yeah. the, the hearts, the characters. Yeah. And so I, I find it that lacking in this. And at the same time, I can say that I thought it was pretty well directed and had some some fun action in it also. So if yeah. you're hard up for some Terminator material and you know you're not going to get the the level of what came before, it's it's there. Yeah. I don't know. You? Yeah, I I I think that my general level of apathy that I had when I first saw it, that remains. Mm -hmm. Uh, However, I, I, you know, I think, I think uh, the, the, some of the thematic material that, that Danny Elfman came up with, I really like, I do think Sam Worthington is, is good in this. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think out of all of the films, all six of them, the one thing you can say about this is it's totally different from any of the other ones. It is. Yeah. So I, I give them credit for taking that swing where they're like, you know what? Again, how much how much can we mix things up and still have it be a Terminator movie? And they tried, and and I can absolutely appreciate that there were people involved with this movie who clearly like the franchise and mm-hmm. wanted to honor it. I don't, I don't think it's it's as cynical a cash grab as maybe the the money people hoped it would be. I agree with that. Yeah, I can feel that. But despite that, I think it was hobbled by a script that really just it didn't work anyway and then there was the writer's strike and the, the, it was like it, again i i just uh, just repeat what i said death by a thousand paper cuts you know mhm mhm and that's uh, my thoughts on terminator salvation <laughs> we did it wow look at that 
Uh, but hey, let us know your thoughts. I know this movie has its fans and defenders, so hey, tell us wh- wh- where we're wrong. That's fine. We can take it. We're big boys. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear it, actually. You can email those thoughts to us at moviefilmpodcast at gmail.com. You can also hit like on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash moviefilmpodcast, and message us there. Uh, as always, please go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Leave a star rating. Every little bit helps. Also, if you're finding us on YouTube, uh, smash that uh, like button and hit subscribe. Boy, never thought I'd be one of those guys saying that. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, but with that, on behalf of my partner, Brian Hall, my name is Zachy Hassan. This has been our commentary track for Terminator Salvation. Hey, maybe next year we'll do another one of these. I, If you can believe it, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, good for you.